And this is a clear message to those who have held the country hostage that they should begin to note that the time is up. The ruling community in Nigeria that have held us hostage over the years must begin to get the notice that it's no longer business as usual. The time of the people has come. The people's movement has come. It is time for the people of Nigeria to be liberated from hunger, from poverty, from, from unemployment, from insecurity, and bad governance. And that is what is playing out today. I must say clearly that our Excellency has made it very, very clear that he's going to make the country, he's going to move the country from being a consumption country to a production country. <laughs> the credentials, the behavior, the antecedents of our presidential candidate is very, very obvious. It's unparalleled. And therefore, you need a vice presidential candidate that will be able to measure up to this. Comrade Peter B cannot do it alone. Oh, yes. He needs people like himself. Oh, he needs men and women of credibility, men and women of dignity, result-oriented men, men with innovative ideas to change the narratives of the country. Mm. And that is why we quietly went into, our, into a search to look for such person to be vice presidential candidates. <laughs> and in line with our promise to Nigerians that we are going to bring the finest Northerner, a Muslim, a philanthropist, a man of many pasts, to be the vice president has gone, and today we have succeeded. We still can say the fact that the man we are presenting will complement our presidential candidates. Today is not a day for long speech, but to present to Nigerians that we have the best material to pilot the affairs of this country to where it ought to be. I have maintained before, and I will reiterate, that the, country, the problem of the country is leadership inflicted. Nigerians are suffering from insecurity, hunger, unemployment, name it, because of failed and bad leadership, clueless leadership. Mm. <coughs> and that is the narrative that we want to change. And the people that we have on board, no doubt, will take Nigeria to that promised land. Mm -hmm. The people themselves have seen it, and that's why they have keyed into the project. The mood of the country is clear. The people have pointed where they want to be in 2023. And I'm very, very happy about the mood of the people. But Bali says, you can fool the people sometimes. sometimes. They you can't fool, fool all the people all the time. So the time of the people has come. <laughs> it is not in my place to unveil the vice presidential candidates. It is the constitutional responsibility of the president to announce the strong limit. I therefore have the honor and privilege this morning right. to invite the incoming president. <laughs> We have decided for your party. We have decided for your party. We have decided to save Nigeria. No going back, no going back. One more time, we have decided. For the party, we have decided to the party. We 
have decided to save Nigeria. No going back, no going back. Never forget, forget. Very respectfully, recognize that chairman and the, all the leaders of this party, recognizing the leaders of NLC and also TUC, the owners of our party as well, recognize all the dignitaries that are here, especially. Uh, two sisters, two ministers, one minister, minister is just minister is minister. People say sniper, sniper. <laughs> sister, don't say sister. Sister, the sister, man, and honorable Jason. All the other people that are here. I won't mention the one that we're here for. Something remarkable for me is that happened this morning. When I said I'm Thank going you. to do this, I was landed by DG this morning. He said, Nan, when, whenever you go out there, you must write what you're going to say. I said, DG, I don't write what I say. He said, you must do this in writing. So this one, we must write it and give you read it and then read it. And I don't read it because how can I start reading that? He said, well, that's, that's I'm the DG. So you have to tell me until now. So I said, if I start reading it, but let me thank you all of you that are gathered here. Especially the press. This event was supposed to take place yesterday. And I sincerely apologize. I went to Mesugri and you know we couldn't uh, make it a scheduled for one reason or the other. So I apologize for those of you who were involved yesterday. What we are going to do here today is very simple. And I thank you for being witness to this our journey of taking back my journey. today, after months, weeks and months, we've gone around, consulted, such around, to look for, like the chairman has said, somebody who will fit the bill of what we're trying to do. And I'm about to say that we have been able to meet a secure somebody who is eminently qualified. <laughs> eminently qualified. <laughs> the to be the vice president of Nigeria. I know people will say, you're not there yet. But I can tell you, I know where we're going. <laughs> this is our march to secure, unite, I make Nigeria productive. And you can't do it without having people who have similar vision, similar idea, and are prepared. I have very distinctive honor to present to you somebody I can call a friend, a younger brother, I'm senior. <laughs> a younger brother, and God willing, the next vice president of Nigeria. <laughs> Senator Yusuf Dati Baba Amen. <laughs> as one of the brightest, youngest personalities, a 
in Nigeria has distinguished himself in all areas. He brings to this mission a great wealth of experience from the background of the private sector to public sector and a global knowledge that will help in our journey of turning around this country. Today, our country is facing so many challenges, which I will not want to mention here because we're just here to introduce our Vice Presidential candidate. But I will not be doing a great service to our country by not mention some of those. We're today the poverty capital of the world. We're today hugely indebted. And I've said in my interview a few days ago, we're actually about to default in our debt service, which will just trigger us into junk status. I pray it doesn't happen. Amen. But that is where we are. By the end of this year, we will need 100% of our revenue will not be enough to service our debts. That is where we've gotten our savings. Our people are hungry. They're angry. And all this is cumulative effect of bad leadership. And we've decided to hold this to stop this drift. We made this choice and, and that they have sat down and discussed. And I said to them, what we are doing is not just two of us, we're bringing all Nigerians into this big hands where everybody will be involved because we want to end the primitive politics of ethnicity, mm. religion, mm. and all sorts of things. Like I've said, show me where in the north <coughs> where there's uninterrupted electricity. Show me where people are not hungry. Show me where there's no poverty in the north. Show me where people are prospering and industries. Unemployment is not in the north. Show it to me in the south. There's no. Or politicians give excuse. Because it's from here. What we want now is to replace all that with competence and merit. <laughs> and that is why I said to my younger brother, this is not a journey where you think anybody is boss. We will soon select a team too, because not just two of us. Chairman said two of us. Chairman is not two of us, not governor state. We're going to have a team of people who will join us to be able to succeed, to be able to build the Nigeria that we desire to start bringing people to have faith in their country. To have hope, to be proud to call Nigeria their own. And that's what we want to do. And that is coming with the same background <coughs> that two of us will be able to start this process. Now that we have <clears throat> completed this circle of nominations, we will soon in the next few days, more weeks, be able to come out with policies 
And my first two, that will be anchored on the 17th SDG position. Because we must rescue this country. We must ensure that this country is secure, this country is united, and this country is productive. It's been done in every country of the world, a major country of the world. So, it is not record science. It just requires a background. It requires, so my dear people, in the coming months, in the coming days, you'll be hearing from me, you'll be hearing from the vice president. There's something that told that they said. They said to me, in this country, is the place people say to me, no, maybe you're talking too much. I said, no. Everybody in the world who is running campaign is talking too much because people want to hear you. You know, people even say, I tell you, why do you have to write a manifesto? Written a written constitution. So listen to me and take note. Let those who are competing come and say who they are and take note. There's no need giving you a glossy paper which we don't know what is written on it. Here from our mouth. So we can tell you what we want to do. Anyway. So in the coming months, we will be telling you what we're going to do. I don't want you to take note and hold us responsible. And where everyone said, we must save her. We're young, we're energetic, we're prepared to unleash the ingenuity, the thoughtfulness, and the energy of the young ones in this country. Because that we have, we have committed to turning all those vast land in the north into the oil of the future. We have signed from the degree yesterday into Abuja. And I turned around to somebody who was on my left, the Papa Nuncio you in Nigeria. And I said, let me tell you, show you the problem of this country. I said, how? I said, just watch. From Medugri to Abuja, we saw fast into land. All cultivated. I said, there's no way in the world you can fly like this. It will be farmland. That is our oil. And we must turn it into oil. Oil is a, a diminishing asset. We must unlock the new asset, which is the land. People will go back there to be productive. America, the richest state in America is California, not Texas. It has to wipe the GDP of Texas, 3.3 trillion. Texas is 1.8. It's not oil. It's agriculture. It's production. Kanu and Karuna is processing center. We will unlock the, what the ports can do in Port Harcourt. The transshipment port that can generate enough income. We have to do that. That can do the shoe and the clothing that Vietnam is doing at any something billion dollars a year. It must stop. This country must put us. And that's what we're going to do. That's what that comes with his background. He does not I can't have PhD in economics for nothing. It is to be applied. And from that background, he's been a successful businessman. As a private sector, I want both of us to leave the confines of our success in the private sector and do it in the public. Wow. That's what we're going to do. Finally, my dear people, I will show you the team. And as I'm looking around, I'm seeing members of the team around there. 
It's not just going to be two of us. It's not our election. It's not your election. It is Nigeria. The structures are you. Those who tell you we will take back our country. And let the high rule Convert them into the structures now. The structures will be our structures. They will follow us. So, my dear people, let me once again introduce a present Senator Dr. Jackson Baban Ahmed. President and the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Executives, by the grace of Almighty Allah, the next President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Friends, associates, the media force, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to begin by uploading my endless praises to Almighty Allah. Who gives power to who he wills, yes. when he wills, yes. and how he wills. Yes. I thank Almighty Allah for bringing us to where we are and what we are doing here and now. More so, I remain ever so grateful and indebted to my leader, my principal, my president to be. Naso! Naso! And his team who worked diligently, researched, and found me wanted. I remain forever humbled and appreciative of this consideration. My task is simple and it is to accept this nomination and this candidacy. Just before I do that, I should normally give justification as follows. The undeniable, unchallengeable, fundamental reason for being on this ticket is to rescue Nigeria. 
Then it goes logically and without saying that you can only rescue that which is in trouble. Nigeria is in a great deal of trouble. I cannot afford not to be part of the movement to rescue Nigeria. The second reason is that I believe in the greatness of Nigeria. I believe there will be peace and prosperity. I believe Nigerian people will unite. In fact, let me debate a bit. Having come from educational background, I belong to the system in which you walk into a classroom, after one hour you come out a changed person. Mm. Ever since I met His Excellency Peter Audi, I've been changing every time we see. Mm. <laughs> there is a message I'm going to carry, and I'll continue to disseminate that. And you only get this message from somebody who is knowledgeable, somebody who researches. Mm. When I hear a new thing, I know it. When I hear a valuable thing, I know it. Mm. And I cannot let it pass. Yes. The fertile land in the north mm. is the crude oil of Nigeria. Yes. Yes. How much more nationalist can you be? Mm. How much more detribalized mm. can you be? Mm. I see a brighter future for Nigeria. From such comments, then I want to justify from the angle of the individuals. He who was motivated by success in the private sector and fought and became a governor for eight years, and since after those eight years has maintained integrity and honor in this league, is one that will not fail in campaign promises. Yes. Peter will be. He who believes in financial propriety will not engage in political rascality. Mm -hmm. Peter will be. He who believes in credibility and integrity in the matter of who to associate with will not mismanage personal, human, and community relations. Peter yes. 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 This is a high point in my life. This is a high point in my career. And I think this is pivotal and a turning point. Yes. Having said this, with all trust to Almighty Allah, with my belief that I am doing this for the sake of Nigeria. Yes. With all humility, I accept mm. your generous nomination.
Labour Party don't unveil their vice presidential candidates and uh, we don't hear waiting the talk. Um, the presidential candidate Peter Obi don't talk say this movement the movement to rescue Nigeria. We thank you for coming. This is the beginning of the journey to save Nigeria. Yes, I From in time as governor of, uh, the of, uh, of uh, Anambra State, of I beg your pardon, till now, um, they don't see Oga Peter Obi as person where they resourceful, person where for health, economy, don't do well as a governor, the vice presidential candidate, that is a, in example, don't show, say, he will lead the country well. Now where the party don't get a presidential, uh, vice presidential candidate, now time for the party to build their to build on the mandate, to build better manifesto where they will showcase to Nigerians and also to prove to Nigerians say they are not ready to have a running for their campaign. Okay, uh, we don't come to the end of the event. Um, we don't see how it be. Make we ask them. Um, Make we ask some of the party leaders as in waiting this uh, unveiling me for the party today. It is an honor.